I love this video you're about to see. It shows what a jet fighter would look like at half the speed of the International Space Station, which is a ridiculous lie. If the Air Force could use that technology, they would, but they don't. NASA's just for show. It's not real. Their technology doesn't have the capabilities they say it does, and I'm about to show you why. The Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird was the CIA's first true spy plane. With a top speed of Mach 3.2, its only limitation was that the fuselage heated up to 400 degrees Celsius at the edge of the atmosphere. So they built it out of a revolutionary material at the time called titanium. This was in 1964. They hired the best minds in the Western world to develop the technology to replace the U-2 spy plane. And indicating Mach 3.0 at this time. When you go Mach 3, the amount of heat that the whole airframe, everything experiences all this heat, and nothing that they have at the store works. You know, there's no paint, no rubber, nothing. You know, metals, uh, plastics, all, all this stuff is useless. And they just had to go through so many contortions to, to make every single part of the plane tolerant of these extreme temperatures. Temperature affects everything on this airplane. The average person probably is not cognizant of that fact. But the faster you go, the harder things get. And if you remember your calculus by looking at this graph, you can pretty much tell that the air particle density reached its limit at about 20 miles altitude. If heat caused by friction was a concern for the X-15 and the SR-71 Blackbird, why wouldn't it be a concern for the International Space Station? You know why it's not a concern? Because they're lying to you. The Lockheed Jet is nine-tenths titanium, and when they build it, the CIA uses a phantom company to buy the material from the world's largest supplier, the Soviet Union. When all they had to do was use NASA's X-15 technology, with a top speed of 4,520 miles per hour. That's double the speed of a plane that came almost 10 years later. One more piece of evidence that everything NASA puts out is bullshit. And what's with the 666 occult symbolism on this plane? Watch this next piece of propaganda video. As early as 1952, the X-15 aircraft was being conceived by the people at NACA. At the Langley Center in Virginia, they began investigating the unknowns associated with flight to the thinnest edges of the Earth's atmosphere. One unknown concerned aerodynamic heating. The X-15 would be the first aircraft to push from supersonic to hypersonic speeds, where the flow of air would heat the leading edges of the plane to 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. Experiment after experiment was run to see if this extreme temperature would weaken or melt basic materials. The data resulting from tests run well beyond temperatures expected for the X-15 proved that there were materials that would withstand this kind of heat. Something is hitting a knob. And it's, and it's... Opens yeah. on the outside. On the outside. How do you do that and maintain a pressure seal between them? O-ring type seals. No, you don't. With a rotating check. All our hatch seals are O-ring type seals. Yeah, but how... She's supposed to be in the thermosphere right now, in an atmosphere of 0.01 millibar with superheated molecules up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, traveling through this medium at 17,500 miles per hour. How is the International Space Station not fully cooked on one side of it? I don't know about you, but I can see her nipple. Because I'm supposed to, right? You know you've been looking at it. As she gently strokes the knob connected to the shaft that has two O-rings on it going through the International Space Station, all the while she has a smirk on her face. And she's got that intentional look about her like, I look like white trailer trash, let's go swimming in the back of your flatbed pickup look about her, right? Right? Yeah, I'm smarter every day. Fuck you, Hollywood. Another problem, after rocket engines shut down, the X-15 would be thrust into a ballistic arc in air so thin that normal aerodynamic control would be impossible. How then could the pilot control the aircraft? The answer, 
reaction controls that would allow him to correct roll movement and position the aircraft. Rockets don't work in the free expansion of space with nothing to push up against. Force equals mass times acceleration. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And fuck you too, myth busters. Your little rocket is pushing up against the glass. This chamber is made out of plexiglass. Plexiglass outgasses like nobody's business. At best, this is a partial vacuum because the chamber would have filled back up with molecules of plastic. They have to make episodes like this in order to reinforce the propaganda. ...properly for re-entry through the atmosphere. But the designers knew the problems of control would never be fully solved until an X-15 aircraft was actually built. We knew the X-15 would look something like this. We knew that it would be a manned aircraft that would fly more than 4,000 miles an hour and as high as 250,000 feet. We knew that like the X-1, the X-15 would be... We live in a universal time of deceit. Don't believe nothing you hear and half of what you see. This big one is a Jumbo 757. It's about the size of the International Space Station. Let's see how good your vision is. Can you see it now? It's about a mile up. Can you see it? Now it's about two miles up. Can you see it now? It's right about there. Let's see how good your vision is now. Six miles up. Can you see it now? Hmm? We're 44 miles up. Can you see Logan Airport? Forget the plane. 50 miles up. Can you see Logan Airport? Hmm? Can you? Yeah. It's pretty good. Well, 192 miles up. What do you think? You can see the International Space Station now? If you find yourself in a world that you don't belong into, it only means you were put here to create a new one.